Welcome to my course electrochemical energy storage and uh, we are now in module number 4 where the basic components in lithium ion batteries that I will introduce and uh, 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 so far uh, we have talked about the positive electrodes, uh, we have talked about negative electrodes. And apart from that, we have separator, we have electrolyte, we have current collectors. So the details of uh, those things uh, that I will describe. So in this particular lecture of this module, we will talk only about the positive electrode materials and mostly as you know, lithiated transition metal oxides. We will be talking about lithiated iron, oxyphosphates and other relevant positive materials that we will describe in this course, in this particular lecture of the course. Now uh, in this particular lecture, uh, again we will briefly talk about the lithium ion battery, their operation principles, then essential characteristics, particularly the positive electrode materials. And then we will talk about the relation of the derived Nernst equation, which I derived uh, in earlier parts of the course. So Nernst equation and how it affects the voltage. Uh, so far as you understand that we talked about the chemical potential of lithium and the free energy versus composition diagram and then we try to understand the voltage profile. So Nernst equation also uh, we will introduce that how it is related with the voltage uh, in accordance to the uh, operation of the lithium ion batteries. Then we will talk about the layered cathode materials and uh, a special high voltage, high capacity cathode material which is still under investigations and we have also done a lot of work on this lithium manganese rich cathode materials for lithium ion batteries. Then we will talk about the olivine cathode materials for lithium ion batteries and spinel cathode materials for lithium ion batteries. So the operation by this time is well understood. So we have a charge operation and during charge lithium ions they are extracted uh, from your uh, cathode material, uh, say layered cathode materials like lithium cobalt oxide and they pass through this uh, porous separator and insert into the layered, uh, another layered graphite uh, material. During discharge, uh, lithium ions are inserted back into the layered oxide from lithiated graphite. So the components here you can see that we will be talking about throughout the module that the current collectors, they are different in case of cathode, uh, it is aluminum, in case of anode, it is copper current character is used. Separators are basically polymer membranes, porous polymer membranes and then uh, that is soaked in electrolyte which is organic electrolyte and uh, some kind of solvent and lithium salts are uh, dissolved in it. So that is used. So we will be talking about the current collector, positive electrode, negative electrode, separator, current collectors as well as during construction you know the several other metals are attached to this current collector. So those things uh, will also be briefly introduced. Now uh, uh, looking at the problem at a uh, slightly different perspective that why exactly uh, we go for the oxide material. Uh, we can also try chalcogenides. Uh, but you know the chalcogenides they have really lower uh, voltage versus metallic lithium. So in half cell configuration uh, less than 2.5 volt is achieved. So they are not comparable with the layered oxide material which yield you 4 volt. So if you uh, look at a typical sulphide based uh, uh, chalcogenides, then you can see that this cobalt 3 plus that 3D band that overlap completely with the sulfur 3P bands in 
cobalt sulfide if you use it as a um, suitable positive material. And what happens this overlap that results in an introduction of holes or removal of electron from the S2 that S2 3P band and also it forms molecular ions such as S2 2 minus and due to this due to this overlap and this happening there is an inaccessibility of higher oxidation state of the metal ion. So, it cannot go to uh, the higher oxidation state from its virgin state. So, that basically reduce the voltage because you know the voltage from Nernst equation that depends on the redox potential. Now, in case of the layered oxide for example, cobalt 3 plus that can easily be stabilized in an oxide. And it is difficult to stabilize cobalt 3 plus in a sulphide since this redox potential cobalt 2 plus and 3 plus that actually lies within the this S2 3P band that whatever I told. But several transition metal oxides uh, for example, lithium cobalt oxide, lithium manganese oxide they provide 4 volt versus metallic lithium. Uh, that those kind of oxides in fact they have been identified as an intercalation material um, intercalation cathode for lithium ion batteries. So, again the essential characteristics as you can now understand that the chemical potential of anode and chemical potential of cathode uh, they are important uh, the uh, in case of uh, getting a higher uh, open circuit voltage and uh, here f is the Faraday constant. So, this relation uh, between the open circuit potential and the chemical potential of lithium in cathode and anode that has been uh, described earlier as well. So, this VOC that is determined basically the energy that is involved in electron transfer. So, that is in fact related to the redox potential of the ions uh, involved in anode and cathode and also lithium ion transfer uh, that depends on the crystal structure or the coordination geometry of the solid electrolyte if you consider instead of liquid electrolyte. Now, the stability window of the electrolyte uh, which is given by this E g uh, the gap between the homo and lumo uh, it also depends on that because your um, open circuit potential that should lie within this. So, anode with a chemical potential above this lumo that will eventually reduce the electrolyte that I have al already explained earlier and a cathode which is having a uh, chemical potential which is below uh, the homo that will oxidize the electrolyte. So, uh, usually a stable uh, uh, SCI layer forms and that prevents this kind of reaction, but this relation that uh, this gap uh, Eg must be larger than the VOC that is very important in selecting the electrolyte and the anode and cathode for lithium ion batteries. So, as you understand if you want to maximize the voltage of course, the chemical potential of cathode must be higher than anode. So, that means the transition metal cation for example, if you take Mn plus it should have higher oxidation state in the cathode and if it is used in anode it should have lower oxidation state. It also certainly depends on the crystal structure. Second, the insertion compound should allow for insertion or extraction of large number of lithium ions per formula unit that you have seen that in case of this metallic alloy uh, say uh, large number of lithium that is hosted. Uh, then you can calculate the theoretical capacity is much larger. So, that will increase the cell capacity. So, that depends the number of available lithium sites and the accessibility of multiple valence state in the metal cation of the insertion host both are important. So, you should have 
uh, available lithium site and at the same time uh, multiple valence state that is preferable if it is from nickel 3 plus to 4 plus uh, and you have a situation where it goes from say nickel 2 plus to nickel 4 plus. So one is one electron transfer another one is two electron transfer. So the capacity will be increased if I go for two electron transfer. So the transition metal cation should have the capability of doing it. Third is the lithium insertion and extraction reaction that should be reversible and uh, there should not be any change in structure uh, of the electrode material during cycling and that will lead good cycle life. Fourth, the intercalation compound should support mixed conduction that also I have illustrated it should have both ionic conductivity as well as electronic conductivity. Most of this uh, positive electrode material they do not have sufficient electronic conductivity we, therefore we need to add external conducting agent in the form of acetylene black or carbon black in order to uh, increase its uh, uh, electronic conductivity and the redox energy of the cathode and anode should lie within the band gap as I have told band gap of the electrode electrolyte and finally the intercalation compound should be inexpensive uh, if it is very expensive then uh, environmentally it should be benign and thermally and chemically stable. So, for example, if you have an option of lithium cobalt oxide and lithium manganese oxide, of course, uh, cobalt is toxic, it is expensive, then we will go for lithium manganese oxide. But as you remember that we will have to take care of the crystal field stabilization energy, manganese has a tendency due to its uh, lower oxidation state stabilization energy, it will migrate from transition metal site to lithium ion site and that will be detrimental for the electrochemical properties of the battery. So, even if they are much cheaper, um, it is difficult to use. So, lithium cobalt oxide was the first choice to make the commercial batteries. Now, it is quite straightforward to relate the voltage and Nernst equation in a typical lithium ion cell. So, when for example, we apply the Nernst equation in lithium ion cell, again we can write the free energy change uh, that is equal to free energy change at standard condition and this term RTL and Q. So, in equilibrium state, this is minus RTL and Q plus RTL and Q and this is actually number of electron that is being transferred Faraday constant and the electric potential. So, this also I have talked about as a part of my earlier lecture that you can replace this del G0 term with minus RT ln Q because uh, in the equilibrium state uh, that free energy change is 0. So, this relation uh, has been talked about. Now, let us look at the reaction in the cathode. So, if it would have been possible to completely uh, extract the lithium from lithium cobalt oxide, then uh, during your discharge this lithium will come back uh, in the lithium cobalt oxide the host material and uh, in the anode uh, this is uh, LiC6 which forms after charging. Uh, it will again uh, ex extract lithium. So, during, during discharge this lithium will come out and this eventually will go and insert into the positive electrode material. So, the overall reaction is uh, this one which uh, I think you will be able to understand this uh, relations. So, now if you apply the Nernst equation in case of anode you have the potential, uh, potential uh, in the standard state then RT by F will be there and this Q value will be the product uh, whatever is there lithium ion and C6 and the total concentration of this one. If you write the Nernst equation for the cathode then this voltage will be the standard voltage again and RTF will be there so, and then you will have to consider this relation. So, this product is uh, lithium and uh, uh, sorry lithium uh, cobalt oxide 
and uh, lithium ion with respect to uh, uh, lithium ion and cobalt oxide with respect to this one. So, we are considering the reverse reaction. So, this is the product and this is the reactant. So, overall battery voltage that you can subtract between this and this and this will be RT by F ln of uh, the concentration of this concentration of this divided by concentration of carbon and concentration of lithium cobalt oxide. So, during discharge in fact, this one and this one both are decreased right, this two concentration decreased. So, overall uh, voltage will decrease upon discharge operation. So, if you actually know the concentration uh, then at it each lithium uh, ion insertion you can estimate the voltage from this relation and you will see that once lithium is inserted uh, during discharge in the positive material indeed the voltage uh, will drop down. Now, the shape if you want to understand the shape then of course, you will have to uh, know the composition uh, del G mix versus composition that diagram and there uh, the actual sigmoidal shape which I earlier described that can be derived. So, layered cathode material for lithium ion cell uh, that which has been commercialized is uh, uh, part of cobalt has been uh, replaced with nickel and not only that little bit of aluminum is also introduced in the structure to form this composition. So, this particular composition uh, where both nickel, uh, cobalt and manganese and also the cited composition that lithium, uh, nickel, cobalt that is doped with aluminum, they are commercialized. And why we have selected this particular composition that also I have illustrated earlier that it is good to have lithium cobalt oxide but due to the cation mixing nickel is coming due to its relatively lower oct octahedral state stabilization energy it comes into the path of lithium where lithium stays in the layer structure. But if you have the uh, three component introduced then you get certain advantage and from the triaxial phase diagram we have earlier understood that indeed this kind of composition is beneficial. So, lithium cobalt oxide is having poor energy density because you cannot take all the lithium out from lithium cobalt oxide. So, the voltage is not, this capacity is not that high. So, your energy density will suffer and lithium nickel oxide and lithium manganese oxide they are not commercialized for their increased tendency of nickel or manganese ion movement in the lithium site and that we now understand why it is so. Additionally, this lithium manganese oxide that yields layer to spinel transformation. So, during cycling there is a phase transformation that also you know that uh, when we talked about lithium cobalt oxide there are various phase transformation takes place O3 to P3 then O1. Uh, because of the extraction of the lithium and that leads to the phase transformation. So, this lithium manganese oxide uh, it undergoes a layer to spinel transformation and that actually yields poor cycling stability. Now, Panasonic is a company uh, who first commercialized this uh, trade name is NCRA a 18650 cell. We will talk about how the construction is done for 18650 cell. So, it looks like this, it is a cylindrical cell. So, this composition they have commercialized nickel 0 0.8, cobalt 0 0.15. So, they have reduced the cobalt content and aluminum gives the stability of the structure and NCM which is abbreviated when nickel, cobalt, manganese all are there in one third, one third, one third. So, that is also in the market and cobalt returns the cation disorder because it never travel to the lithium site. Nickel actually yields higher capacity and manganese stabilizes this structure. So, NCM is a good uh, alternative. 
So, this is the actual structure uh, of this kind of layered cathode material. Sometimes the cathode surface uh, is coated with uh, various oxides or fluoride or phosphate or carbon which are not electrochemically active. So, this is advantageous for you to coat it and that is done either to improve the conductivity because as I know the electronic conductivity is not that great or this kind of coating that reduce the electrode and electrolyte interaction. So, the ACI layer formation in positive electrode as I have mentioned earlier that the ACI whatever ACI form uh, unlike the anode material they are not exactly deposited on the uh, positive ele uh, negative electrode substrate. So, in positive electrode they are most in most cases they are soluble. So, fresh surface is exposed again a CI layer form. So, that is not that much good for the performance of the battery. So, this kind of surface coating uh, it has been proved quite good. Now, it was really a problem to get high voltage as well as high capacity to match the capacity of the uh, positive, uh, negative electrode material. So, as you know if you take the example of graphite it gives the capacity about 372 to 375 milli ampere hour per gram. So, far there is no uh, positive electrode material which can match this capacity. So, if you cannot match this capacity then the total cell capacity that will be much lower you cannot improve it. So, if you improve the voltage and if you improve the capacity simultaneously then only the energy density of the battery will be high. So, one intelligent aspect uh, uh, the procedure they it was developed in Argonne National Laboratory and what they did uh, they took this compound Li2 MnO3 and uh, in layered location it, it is having a monoclinic structure and in layered the notation you can write it uh, lithium in its lithium site and one third of it it goes to the uh, uh, manganese site transition metal cation site. So, there is a ordering 1 is to 2 ordering of lithium and manganese and this kind of ordering you can see in the transmission electron micrograph and this kind of domain it forms it is a ordered structure uh, inside the layered material. So, I will just explain it. So, eventually that uh, is electrochemically inactive in the normal voltage window. So, that means we operate the uh, battery 2 to 4.2 volt range. So, this lithium Li2 MnO3 they are electrochemically inactive. So, you cannot extract that easily lithium from it and manganese as you can see here manganese is in plus 4 valence state lithium is plus 2. So, that is getting balanced. So, it is difficult to remove this. But interestingly when you charge it beyond 4.5 volt lithium can be extracted from Li2 MnO3 through the release of lattice oxygen. So, this lattice oxygen uh, will be removed and then you can extract the lithium and eventually you will form activated manganese dioxide. So, activated manganese dioxide will substance is uh, basically integrated with uh, the active component. So, you use this material and you form a composite of the traditional layered oxide material and if you charge it up to 4.2 volt then the lithium from this cannot be extracted. But if you increase the charge voltage beyond 4.5 volt then release of oxygen occurs from this part from this part to form manganese dioxide which is structurally integrate with the layered component. So, now when you discharge it then this manganese which is in plus 4 valence state because MnO2 you can understand that oxidation state of manganese is plus 4. So, they are reduced in plus 3 valence state and then again oxidize to plus 4 valence state. So, the capacity is increased because in order to do that this manganese 4 to manganese 3 and this redox to take part in you are introducing additional lithium. So, additional lithium in transition metal site that you are introducing though eventually 
that will increase the capacity. And this redox along with the traditional uh, redox of nickel 2 plus to nickel 4 plus and cobalt 3 plus to cobalt 4 plus which was, which was already there plus the manganese here. And if the manganese in plus 3 state is there in NMC kind of component, additionally you have this manganese and excess lithium. So therefore, this type of composite cathode which is, uh, which is prepared quite intelligently. So that increases the capacity and therefore, it is termed as lithium manganese rich cathode material. So pictographically, if you see it that in this kind of layered material, if you charge to 4.2 volt, then lithium will be extracted from this side. So the lithium vacancy uh, will be there here. Then you discharge it, then again lithium will come back and fill up these vacancies. So after a number of charge discharge cycle, most of the lithium is coming back. There is slight phase transition uh, and oxidation state, of course, the redox uh, oxidation state will change, but this is the normal procedure which so far we have described. In this case, when you make a composite of this layer with uh, your uh, Li2 MnO3 type of uh, otherwise uh, inactive material and charge to, for example, 4.8 volt, then several uh, other things happen here. So, as you can see here, uh, it can form uh, the lithium vacancy in the lithium layer. Then number two is lithium vacancy is also formed in this layer because you can understand lithium is not only in the uh, layered side, but it is also there in the transition metal side. And oxygen vacancy that will form because oxygen will get released. So, several different phenomena is taking place. And not only that, this uh, transition metal cation, they also migrate here. So, during the charge, several things happens which are very unlike uh, than the traditional uh, layered cathode materials. While you discharge it, then again the phase transition you cannot avoid, uh, but uh, this and this, this together, it gives you very large kind of uh, uh, capacity because of the inclusion of more lithium into the transition metal site and integration due to the integration of manganese oxide. So, the capacity is grossly increased. So, I am citing one example from our own work that uh, as such your Li2 MnO3, they are having very low capacity. We did the differential capacity plot here. So, here uh, as you can see that very, very small capacity is achieved. Now, you have a layered uh, material like lithium nickel cobalt oxide, you get at the most of 180 uh, milliampere hour per gram. Uh, if I tell you the composition, it is point, uh, nickel is 0 0.8 and cobalt is 0 0.2. So, the capacity is in this range. Now, you make a composite, you can see that this capacity has increased as high as, as, high as 300 uh, because of this integration. And the oxygen, uh, when it is coming out from the structure, as you can see in the fast cycle, that if you do uh, a differential capacity, you will see that is indicated by a very large positive anodic peak and which is otherwise uh, absent in the second cycle. So, that means in fast cycle indeed, there is some kind of structural change takes place, oxygen comes out from the lattice and the integration takes place and that increases the capacity. So, uh, if you uh, want to know about the status of this lithium manganese rich cathode, the first one is layered to spinel type of phase transformation, uh, although it is a partial that with repeated cycling that leads the voltage fading. So, completely the fading characteristics uh, uh, cannot be avoided. And during charge discharge, the transition metal cation migrates to lithium vacancy that already we have shown. 
and the layered phase that converts into the spinel structure. And this layer to spinel structural change that basically causes a gradual voltage fading, not the capacity fading, but the voltage, it the voltage itself that goes uh, down. So, it is not very apparent in second cycle, but if you keep on doing it, you will see that at this particular capacity, which is given by the lithium ion concentration, a gradual fading of the voltage cannot be avoided. So, surface coating with an inert material like fluoride or phosphates uh, on the surface of LMR that has been given that gives to structural stability. Carbon coating, uh, they improve the electronic um, conductivity, so eventually enhance the rate performance. Now, uh, one can use receptor like cathode material to the solve the problem of high irreversible capacity loss because uh, uh, this is also another problem that uh, if you go for uh, uh, this uh, type of uh, first cycle and second cycle, if you see that there is a uh, huge loss, so the Coulombic efficiency is not that great. So, to solve that uh, high reversible capacity of this LMR, uh, some cathode material was uh, developed like V2O5, uh, this compound, this compound, uh, this uh, was developed. So, large amount of lithium ion that is irreversibly extracted from this lithium rich material can be reinserted into this material. So, this material will become active and that will uh, lead to the capacity. So, that is another improvement some work is going on. Surface modification uh, includes the acid leaching that might extract the lithium and oxygen in advance. Without uh, electrochemical charging, you can do the acid leaching and that is beneficial for the first cycle Coulombic efficiency to drop down significantly. Uh, novel structure uh, you can make like nano wire or nano plate or core shell type of structure that usually shows superior electrochemical performance. Uh, for example, the rate performance can be improved uh, by controlling the growth direction where the lithium ion transport is expedited. Cutoff voltage is important. Uh, so, initially lower charging voltage can and avoiding the deep discharge. So, if instead of going to 4.8 volt, if you limit it to 4.7 volt and do not deep discharge your battery, that is also sometimes beneficial. Olivine cathode material, that is another category. Uh, this also I have explained. So, you can understand that there is a strong uh, bond between this phosphate and phosphorus and oxygen. Uh, the covalency that supports a relatively high voltage, the M atom that is iron are located in the octahedral site as you can see here and LiO6 octahedron that form a H shearing chains along the B axis. So, PO4 group share one edge with a MO6 that can clearly be shown here and two edges with LiO6 kind of octahedra. So, this is a very stable structure, but unfortunately it exhibit very low electronic conductivity for lithium ion diffusion. Uh, that basically leads to lower discharge capacity and uh, higher polarization value and also the rate performance is not that great. In order to overcome that, uh, one can uh, reduce the particle size. So, if you reduce the particle size that reduce the diffusion distance and increase the contact area between the active material and electrolyte, which sometimes is good, but sometimes it uh, creates problem because if a CI is formed and if it is dissolved and that is not good for the cathode. So, carbon coating is usually also done to increase the electronic conductivity, almost all the commercial uh, olivine based cathode material, they are coated with uh, carbon. Sometimes this Fe site, uh, you can dope it with other uh, element and that also, so that is the bulk modification that also you can do to increase the electronic conductivity because of 
the alleovalent dopant effect it creates vacancy and eventually it increases the electronic conductivity. So, there are various types of olivine material. So, if you replace iron 2 plus by manganese 2 plus, cobalt 2 plus also can be replaced or nickel 2 plus that basically increases the redox potential. So, iron is somewhere here around 3.5. Uh, if it is uh, here, uh, then it is increased, it is increased further here, but the capacity also falls down. So, the energy density uh, that is to be seen that how much energy density which is a uh, product of the voltage and capacity that exactly you gain. So, lithium manganese phosphate uh, is of particular interest because this is environmentally benign, manganese is abundantly available particularly in India and the redox couple is around 4 volts so which is higher than this. So, this uh, material is of interest, but to my knowledge, uh, this has not yet been commercialized. But low capacity of this uh, practical capacity, even at low current, uh, this is not uh, very um, good for the commercial adaptability. And this is due to the wide band gap, about 2 electron volt and lower electronic conductivity which is about 10 to the power minus 14 Siemens per centimeter. Uh, this is uh, much lower as compared to lithium iron phosphate. Spinel based cathode material, so I have already explained it earlier. So, lithium ion they occupies 8 A sites and manganese occupy the octahedral site and oxygen is 32 E Wyckoff notations that site and oxygen forms a close pack array. Tetrahedral sites are uh, face shared with vacant octahedral site which I have denoted with 16 C. So, eventually this 8A, 16 C, 8A, 16 C that channel is available for lithium ion intercalation. So, in the composition range where X is between 0 to 1. Uh, this lithium manganese oxide that remains cubic. So, lithium extraction from tetrahedral site does not alter the cubic symmetry, but the lithium extraction occurs in two step. You remember when we talked about the charge profile, it has two plateau. So, one is in this composition range and other is in this composition range. So, it occurs in two step. Structure remains cubic but in the composition range between 2 to 1 cubic spinel phase transformation takes place. So, if you additionally put 1 to put lithium in this site to form Li2 Mn2O4 which occurs typically at 3 volt then a cubic to tetragonal phase transition takes place and this is associated with 16 percent increase of C by A ratio of the unit cell. So, you can calculate the volume expansion. If you know the volume of the cubic cell and know the volume of the tetragonal cell by knowing the C by A ratio, then you can estimate that uh, there will be substantial increase of the volume. So, 3 volt range if you do the charge discharge, they will uh, have a poor capacity retention because uh, a continuous change of this lattice. Uh, structure from cubic to tetragonal and back to cubic and structural integrity will not be maintained. So, you will have to restrict the deep discharge you cannot do. So, you will have to restrict uh, above 3 volt uh, region. So, this is one of the examples again from our own work that how it occurs. So, 2 plateau you can see at 4 volt range that is due to the ordering of lithium and this is quite well described in this uh, uh, cyclic volta voltamogram. And uh, then finally, uh, there is insertion around 3 volt, uh, around uh, 3 volt region slightly lower than that. So, this uh, increases the capacity because a lot of lithium intake is there, but as I said that simultaneously it will lead to the tetragonal phase transformation which is not good for the battery. 
So, this uh, is already explained earlier that what is the spinel based cathodes problem. So, at elevated temperature capacity fading that remains a major problem. Uh, joint Taylor distortion is also another oxygen deficiency, manganese dissolution into the electrolyte. So, these are the common problem and already I have explained the Jan Taylor distortion results in the cubic to tetragonal transition from going to this to this phase and the cubic to tetragonal transition is accompanied by about 6.5 percent increase in unit cell volume which makes it difficult to maintain the structural integrity during the charge discharge cycle and that results a rapid fade in 3 volt region. Manganese dissolution is due to a disproportionate reaction of manganese 3 plus to manganese 4 plus. So, this manganese 4 plus remains in the solid, but once uh, this actually transformed to manganese 2 plus, it leaches out to the electrolyte. So, in presence of the trace amount of water uh, that is produced uh, uh, HF uh, hydrofluoric acid because your salt is lithium fluoride based salt. So, trace amount of water that produces hydrofluoric acid. Uh, actually, this disproportionate reaction takes place. So, if you have affluent in manganese 3 plus cation. So, it will transform to manganese 2 plus and manganese 4 plus and as I said manganese 4 plus will be there in the solid that means in the electrode itself, but manganese 2 plus will get uh, leached out from the electrode and it will go to the solution. So, you are losing uh, your redox material and that will basically reduce the capacity. Formation of the two cubic phases uh, in 4 volt range that gives this two plateau that is related to oxygen deficiency during charging. So, oxygen um, leaves from the structure. So, that is also another problem and that eventually leads to the development of some kind of micro strain during the cycling and that also leads to the capacitive fading. So, the topic uh, of uh, this lecture that uh, you can find in this book. Uh, uh, particularly chapter 12, uh, uh, which is written by uh, the student of good enough who got the Nobel Prize, Professor Urumugam Manthiram. So, I had the opportunity to work with him when I was in US for some time. Uh, so, that is a nice introduction of the positive electrode material and uh, also you can consult this book, particularly uh, page number 80 to 95. Uh, to study it more whatever I have covered in this lecture. So, I have illustrated the charge discharge operation in lithium ion rechargeable cell, then requirement of the positive electrodes for their selection in lithium ion rechargeable cells, then um, try to show you that how uh, Nernst equation is applied in lithium ion rechargeable cell to uh, predict its voltage profile and layered cathode and particularly lithium manganese rich cathode material uh, that is introduced. So, this part is quite novel. So, a lot of research is going on on LMR based cathode material and olivine structured cathode that has been commercialized and spinel based cathode that also has been commercialized. Thank you for your attention.